And I said, well, you never thought about giving up. Did you, did you ever think, I mean, maybe you joke, but, but you never thought, hey, you know what? This parenting thing is, you know, is, is too hard, right? I, I, I think I'm just going to, I know my kid's only three, but I think I'm just going to kind of leave, you know, just I'll, I'll leave him a note or her note saying, you know, it's not for me. I tried it out, but I'm just not a parent person and leave. And of course, you would never think that. You would also never think if you're driving stick to get out of the car and just leave the car there. And so, why? What's up, my friend? And welcome back to another episode of the Legendary Life Podcast. I'm health expert Ted Rice, and today I'm coming to you from Phuket, Thailand, where I've been for the past several months. And I got to tell you, things have changed. I'll be on my way to Penang, Malaysia for a week before returning back here and then stopping one additional place before I make it back to the States. That's the kind of crazy thing that happens when you do this digital nomad thing. Now, today I'm super excited to share this episode because it's another installment of the Real Talk Friday. And if this is your first time listening to the Legendary Life Podcast. This show is all about clearing up health and fitness confusion by breaking down science-based information on how to lose fat, prevent disease, and live a longer, healthier life. And what we usually do is I do technical discussions or or technical presentations rather on uh, the podcast about these topics as well as do interviews. But Real Talk Friday is where you and I, we get a little more personal and I share some lessons from either my personal life or from the conversations with my clients so that you can learn something to level up your life. And especially we focus on mindset in these episodes. So today what I want to talk about is how transformation happens. So many of us we don't understand how transformation happens. And I'm not just talking about how to lose a few pounds on your body or how to build some muscle by going to the gym, but what is it that changes in us that leads to people seeing you as one type of person and then in a few months after going through a transformation, seeing you as a completely different person And by the way, we can transform for the better, and we can also transform for the worse. We can lose track of our lives. If something, maybe a death in the family, or we get laid off from our job, or our spouse cheats on us, or we get divorced, we go through, some of us at least go through a transformation, and we may be on top of the world, and then something happens, and then all of a sudden, people notice that there's something up with us. We're not standing quite as tall. We're not as social. We're not as extroverted. We're not, we don't have a smile on our face. We don't have the same energy. Maybe even we start gaining weight or losing weight. And people see that transformation. And what is it that's going on really that causes that transformation? What is the true change that's happening? And if you're (laughs) like some of our clients, they come in kind of feeling beat down, maybe too stressed about life. Maybe they've had something happen to them where they ended up putting on a bunch of weight. Maybe they just got out of shape and they were in shape previously and they're looking to get back. Maybe it's been on their minds for years and they've been trying these quick fixes And they're ready to finally step up and create that transformation. And so they go through the process. And yes, externally, they change. They lose weight. They build muscle. They look great. But it's not just that. They show up as a different type of person, just like the person who went through a tough time and is showing up as a different type of person. And so what I want to explain to you today is what that fundamental change is. So we start to understand it. And I want to kick off this episode by sharing a conversation I had with a client who signed up, one of our uh, group coaching clients. And I do uh, two calls with my group coaching clients, even though most of the calls are 
group calls, but I want to make sure they're set up for success. And so on this call, I was asking him how he was doing on the program. And he lost five pounds in the first week, actually. And it's funny because nobody ever believes me when I tell them that the average is four to six pounds in the first week. Now, these are all people, by the way, and this is a bit of a tangent, but I think an important one. People trust me, but they didn't believe when I told them four to six pounds in a week because they think, oh, I've been working out hard for months. I've been eating the right things for months. I I start with a green smoothie in the morning, and then I have a salad and lean protein at uh, uh, at lunch. And then for dinner, I eat well too. I eat salmon and kale. And then when it happens to people, there's a shift in their mindset. There's a there's a little trans transformation that happens there. And I was talking to him about that. And I was also asking, like, how are the other things? And he's like, well, you know, it's a little tricky to do this. It's a little tricky to get going. It's a little tricky to learn all the things that I'm having to learn. And he's cool with it and he's doing well and he's crushing it. He's actually already down 10 pounds in a few weeks. But we had this talk at the the beginning and he was talking to me about, you know, like, oh man, this is, you know, some of this is tough to learn because the truth is about doing this, about changing your body is everyone wants the little secret. What was, what was the secret? Was it intermittent fasting or was it cutting out the carbs or was it doing keto or was it just uh, eating all organic food? Everybody wants a little secret, but there is no little secret. There is no little secret. It's understanding the right strategies and doing them consistently over a period of time. You can get fast results, but it takes a certain level of commitment to even get there. That's why I don't have a button where you can just sign up. So he was talking about this, and I wanted to explain to him how this happens. Because so many of us, we try to take on something new. Let's say it's to lose weight or to get into the gym and learn how to exercise in a way that gets results. And it's tough at the beginning. And all we're thinking about is how hard this is and the pain that we're in, right? And it's not that much pain, but it's like frustration. Oh, I've got to figure this out. I've got to figure that out. Oh, that didn't work this time. And I started to talk to him and I asked, well, do you remember the first time you rode a bike or drove a car? And he said, you know what? I remember the first time. I remember when I learned how to drive stick and he told me the story of how he learned how to drive stick. It was on a road trip and the guy just sort of threw him in the, you know, just told him to do it. I guess gave him more instruction than that. And I said, yeah, you know, and I remember when I learned how to drive stick shift too. Do you remember when you stalled out at a light? The light was red. You came to a perfect stop and everything, but then the light turned green and the cars in front of you are gone. But then you try to go to and you jump the car and it stalls and you've got to restart. And then the car, there's cars in back of you and you feel like a total idiot. And he said, yeah, of course, you know, that happens. Or like when you're on a, when you're driving up a hill and then you've got to, you know, pull the parking brake so you don't slide backwards. And then you've got to really slowly let off the gas so you don't fall, uh, roll back and, and hit the person in back of you. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's another one too. That takes a little while to, to get, but you know, those, those, those were good times. And I said, well, you didn't learn how to drive stick. You, you didn't, you weren't trying to learn how to drive stick and then you stalled the car and then you just got out of the car. You said, you know what? Driving stick isn't for me or when, because he's a parent and so many people are like, when you're raising your children and you're figuring it out because there's no parent handbook, right? There's books you can read and give you some direction, but at the end of the day, you need to experience it being a parent. You need to go through the actual experience to really know what to do. I mean, could you argue against that? If you're a parent, you're probably nodding your head right now. Yes, that's exactly. I read some books, some articles, got some advice, but it wasn't until I was in the crucible called parenthood that I had to learn, you know, what really works and what doesn't. 
And I said, well, you never thought about giving up, did you? Did you ever think, I mean, maybe you joke about it, but you never thought, hey, you know what? This parenting thing is, you know, is, is too hard, right? I, I, I think I'm just going to, I know my kid's only three, but I think I'm just going to kind of leave, you know, just I'll, I'll leave him a note or her a note saying, you know, it's not for me. I tried it out, but I'm just not a parent person and leave. And of course, you would never think that. You would also never think if you're driving stick to get out of the car and just leave the car there. And so why? And he said, well, I don't, I don't have a choice. There's no way I would you know, leave the car there. That's crazy. It would get towed. It would, I, would, I would get a ticket. I would have to go get it anyway. It's like, that's not true though. You have a choice. You just don't feel like you do because of your values, because of what you value. And the same thing with a parent. Who's stopping you from walking out on your child or your children? Oh, I would never do that. Yeah, but you could. You choose not to because you do have a choice. You could just pick up and leave, right? Now, there, there's legal consequences and your kids may chase you down one day and, you know, Stand, have a standoff and tell you how terrible of a, a person you are for leaving and they never have any, anything to do with you, but there is a choice. But we feel like there's not. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about is when we get to the point where we realize the consequences of being out of shape, of being unhealthy, of not exercising, not getting enough exercise, where we, where we feel like there's no choice but to do this. That's one of the first changes that happen. And we're going to talk about change in a deeper level in a second, but I want to share that. When you feel like, you know what? I would never walk out on my children. I'm a parent. I'm a mother. I'm a father. There's, that's not an option. Or I would never leave my car just because I stalled out. I, I started the car back up and I kept trying. Even though it stalled again, I kept trying. I kept doing it. I kept doing it. I kept doing it. So the first step here is making that commitment. And I talk about that. People say, oh, well, I'm committed, but they don't realize what commitment actually is. So those are examples of true commitment. When, when someone says, hey, why don't you just... if." Raising your children is too hard. Just, uh, just leave. Just leave them. You know, give them up for adoption. And you're like, would never cross my mind. Why? Because you're committed to being a parent. You're committed to your children, and committed not a word you say. The word comes after, but it's a feeling that you have inside. You start. Someone mentions that to you. You start. I mean, maybe it, it happened right now when I started talking about walking out on your children. How does that make you feel? That feeling, that's the commitment. Not what you say. It's that feeling that you don't have any option. Like, this has to be done. I would never do that. It's, it's not who I am. It's not what I would ever do. That's commitment. Not the word, not the words we say, but that feeling. That's what keeps you there as a parent. The other part of that is that we struggle through the ups and downs. You learn how to be a parent from learning by trial and error. Even like I said, if you've read a bunch of books, read a bunch of articles, listened to some podcasts, got advice from your parents or your grandparents or your friends who were already parents before you, you've got to learn through experience. You've got to go through the ups and downs or learning how to drive a car. You don't just give up when the car stalls. You start it up and you keep going. And then you start learning how to do more things. You start learning how to parallel park. You force yourself to do it because you realize that driving a car is a necessity in society. And to get what you want in society, you're probably going to have to get on that car unless you live in a place with great public transportation. So what happens to us as we force ourselves through that process? That is the foundation of transformation. Right, the commitment and forging forward through the obstacles, through the ups and downs, that is how transformation happens. And we've gone through it our whole life. Nobody's just pointed out to you, uh, pointed it out to you until now, or hopefully you've heard it before. But what actually happens 
The journey of transformation is actually a journey of physiological change in your brain. What do I mean by that? And I'm not even trying to sound intelligent here. I'm trying to tell you the truth about this. You went from a person who didn't know how to drive stick shift or didn't know how to be a parent to five or 10 years in the game. You know, you, you know, you're still learning all the time, right? Cause your kids are growing, but you, you have some foundational principles down. You've got some things figured out. What I'm telling you, what I'm saying here is that every time you do something new with your brain, whether it's being a parent, whether it's learning how to drive stick shift, learning how to ride a bike, learning how to play a musical instrument, learning how to be more social, learning how to do public speaking, learning how to do a podcast, learning how to exercise in the gym, anything that you learn, anything that you don't currently have a skill with, and then you try to learn, all of a sudden, new neurons start growing and making connections with other neurons, brain cells start growing and making connections with other brain cells. This is the concept of neuroplasticity. And we also know that Hebb's law, a law that says neurons that fire together, wire together. So as you start to do new habits, neurons form connections with each other that reinforces that skill or that habit. And the more you do it, the more that becomes who you are. And that can be for good or bad. If you get in a situation where like you become, what does it mean to be the person who watches five hours of TV like your average American is uh, overweight or obese, like 70% of Americans eating too much food, eating the wrong types of foods, being too sedentary. Those are all habits. It's not easy to sit and watch five hours of TV, right? It You got to pay attention. You're sitting there. You could argue it takes some form of work, even though we're motivated to do it because we get a payoff from watching you know, the action movie or the rom-com or whatever it is, our favorite shows. It takes effort to do it. We just get a payoff for doing it. And that becomes our personality. That becomes who we, we transform into that type of person. And likewise, if we become the person who has to go to the gym three or four times a week or you know something feels off, that's a, a transformation as well. And it happens at the a neurological level. So what I'm saying here is transformation is ultimately internal. It's ultimately a journal, a neurological journey that we take where our brains start to rearrange themselves and rewire themselves. This is what neuroscience tells us so that we establish these habits that eventually after doing them for so long, just become who we are. For example, you don't think about driving anymore. You probably drive and talk on the phone. You probably don't think about parenting much if you're a parent, unless some particular thing comes up, right? Your son's first girlfriend or, you know, your daughter's first, uh, you know, taking her to college and whatever it is, right? For the most part, you have these things down as part of your identity. So what, what are the practical takeaways then? This is all nice and fine, you might be saying, but what are the, what, what are you actually telling me? Well, one is you've got to make that commitment. And the commitment is the feeling. It's not the words. It's the feeling that you need to do something about this. And it takes a long time for people to get to that point. But by getting your body fat tested, if, if we're talking about uh, you know changing your body, by getting your body fat tested, that's something that I've found people motivates people to really take action because they find out all of a sudden, oh, my body fat is 34% or 40% or 45%. Or for me, it was 22 to 23%. It hit me like a slap on the face because I was a exercise, a fitness, health and fitness professional with a lot of years of experience. And here I am and I'm overweight. I'm a fat boy. And so many of us, we judge ourselves by who we see in our lives, right? Our friends, 
And our friends say, why do you want to lose weight? You look great because they're a lot fatter than us, but we don't feel great. So that first part is getting some leverage on yourself, understanding like, hey, this is a non-negotiable, just like learning how to drive a car, just like being a parent. If I have children, this is a non-negotiable. Developing the feeling that this is not negotiable. This must be done. I will end up in a terrible place psychologically, physically, maybe even spiritually if I don't take care of my body. And then the second part is to go through the ups and downs. You see this with a lot of people who try starting meditation. People are like, oh, I keep, you know, my thoughts keep wandering. And it's just, what do you do about how do you get the thoughts to stop? You don't get the thoughts to stop. You bring your focus back to the meditation and you do it gently. And a lot of people fall off the wagon when they start trying to get in shape. What do you do in that case? How do you stop falling off the wagon? You practice getting back on because there is never a point where you won't fall off. Not in modern life with uh, flourless chocolate cakes and Joe Stone Crab's key lime pie and uh, you know gourmet Italian gelato. No, those are my favorite, three favorite things. Maybe you have other favorite things. Maybe it's pizza or hamburgers or French fries for you or potato chips, whatever. But there's never going to be a time unless you're isolated from modern life. If you're living in modern life, there's never going to be a time where you won't fall off a little bit or you won't eat those things, more importantly. What you need to do is learn how to get back on and keep practicing getting back on until it's no longer a struggle. Just like the car driving the stick shift until it's no longer a struggle. I still stall. I, I've been driving stick shift for years, but I go back and I'll uh, drive my dad's stick shift around. Even though he's 76, he still has a stick shift uh, infinity and I'll, I'll stall it every once in a while or jump it, you know, but I just, I don't stress out about it because I know, oh, I'm just out of practice. I'll get back into it. Or just like how you do with being a parent, right? You figure it out. You push through it because you know you're committed to your kids. And as we do that, the more we do that, the more we change as a person. And then that thing that throws us off and makes us feel so guilty and so worthless and lowers our self-esteem and lowers our confidence, it no longer has the sting because you understand it's just part of the game. It's part of the process. It's part of the process of transformation. And it's the challenge that you go through whenever you start learning anything. And once you understand this, once you understand this is the journey, there is no other way. There's no way to save yourself from the pain or from the, you know, feeling like a loser or feeling, you know, whatever the feelings come up for you when you quote unquote, make a mistake or quote unquote, fail. That's, it's just part of the journey and your job is to get back up and to keep going. Once you get that through your head, like you've already learned in other areas of your life, once you apply it to this or whatever you're trying to achieve, whether it's getting in shape or losing fat or something completely different, that's when the change sticks because everyone can lose weight by doing a little fast thing, right? Cutting carbs or you know, doing keto. But the real problem is that people don't keep the change. And what I'd argue right now is that it's because they didn't do it long enough for an internal change to happen. And we talked last uh, episode on Real Talk Friday about some of the lifestyle things that need to change for us to stay in our new state as well. So those things need to change. We need to change as a person. The real transformation isn't external, it's internal. And until you understand that, and when I mean understand, I don't mean, yeah, I, I understand that, Ted. I, I, I speak English. I, I understand the words you're saying in the sentences. I get all that. I don't mean that. That's left brain. That's an intellectual understanding. I mean, when you feel it, that is true understanding. So that's going to wrap up today's episode. Understand that this is the process of transformation. 
It's the process of learning. It's the process of learning a new skill. It's the process of becoming a better version of yourself. But it also can go in the opposite direction too. So look around right now and make sure that you are forging forward in the right direction. And I'm sure if you're listening to a podcast like Legendary Life, I mean, it took some change to switch from whatever you were listening to before, the news or music, to listening to this. And once you understand that's part of the journey, once you understand those changes, that's exactly what happens. Then it starts to become more effortless. Then it starts to become more of who you are. It starts to become more predictable. So you understand what you've got in front of you. And that makes all the difference when I talk to my clients. Just saying, hey, this is, you've already done this. You've done this so many times in your life. You're just doing it with something new. Why? Because you haven't done it in this area. And there tends to be more emotions for a lot of people, a lot of self-esteem wrapped up in the way we look, especially in our society that constantly markets to us with advertising, with you know superhero movies, all the guys are ripped and jacked. All the women are, uh, you know, tight, lean, and toned, and that's what our our society kind of sells to us. And from for the most part, those are completely unrealistic. So it makes us feel extra bad. It's like looking at people on Instagram, right? Looking at their, you know, five mansions and three yachts and two planes and perfect body, and saying, "Oh wow, I'm I'm a loser compared to that." person. But the truth is that uh, we can create change in our bodies and in our lives. And it doesn't matter who else is doing what. It has to do with, are we willing to commit to whatever we say that we want? And are we willing to go through, to walk the path that we know we're going to get knocked down on? Not might get knocked down on, but definitely 100% will get knocked down on. Are you ready to go through that? And that's the question you need to ask yourself if you truly want to transform. So I will say this, if that sounds good to you, I don't think it does to most people. It's like, well, just tell me the magic pill to take. Actually, that's all I'm here for, Ted. Should I just cut carbs? Is that what you're saying? Should I just do intermittent fasting or cut carbs and intermittent fasting? What should I do? And can you just show me the easy thing that I can do? And the truth is what I just told you today. It's the long, arduous process of transformation if you want this to stick for life. And that's the only thing that I'm even interested in. That's the only thing that I offer with my coaching group, a permanent fix, the way to do this right. And if you're one of the very few, because most people will never get to that point, I don't think. They'll keep searching for the magic pill. But I know people who show up and listen to Legendary Life are different. And so if that's interesting to you, if you want to get this handled, if you're at the point where you've been listening for years And you're finally, you know that you're at the point where you need to do something. You've already got the books. You've tried the $57 workout downloads. You've, you know, been listening to podcasts. You've been trying things and things aren't working. You haven't lost a pound in months. You've been working out at the gym and eating the healthy foods, but you're still not making the change that you want. And you are ready for that journey of transformation. Then I, uh, then I want to invite you to hop on a call with me and to make that happen to see if you're right for our group group coaching program or one-on-one coaching program. And to make that happen, you go to legendarylifeprogram.com slash apply. That's legendarylifeprogram.com slash apply. And that's where we'll have a talk and we'll figure out if you're truly coachable and committed and ready for the change that you say you want. All right, that wraps up another Real Talk Friday episode. I hope you learned a lot from today's episode about how transformation happens. And that really has to do with your brain and the rewiring of your brain. It's not about the superficial stuff we all focus on. It's about that rewiring. And once you understand that, it makes the journey so much easier. You start to get some 
distance from your emotions and start to see from a third person perspective, your behaviors, your habits, where you are, your current results, and you understand I need to do something different. So that wraps it up. Hope you learned a lot. Hope you're enjoying these and I will speak to you next time.